Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. We got a great show today. I just came back from the concert. It's the uh, with Rome, with Sublime with Rome. What a great time! Great time. I was here for the whole weekend, and we're gonna get into it with Rome. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Before we get started. Check us out on YouTube program, uh, member programs, Patreon member programs, cameos, everything else we're doing. Don't forget, Reality Check Program, uh, Gangster Redemption book, number one seller. It's doing great and it's going crazy. Now, I'm going to introduce Sublime with Rome. This is Rome Ramirez, who is the lead singer and the guitarist of the show. And welcome to the show, buddy, man. Brother, welcome man, here. I love you. Thank you so much Thank for you, me man. Up, man. All right, let's get into your story because I want my audience to know what you do, how did you get into music, how did you become with Sublime is a big band, but now it's Sublime with Rome. Yeah. So we're gonna get into that, we, we know the tragedy, we're not gonna get into the tragedies too much, you know, that, that's not what it's... You can watch that, the documentaries on that. Absolutely, <laughs> I wanna get into you and your story, because one, I think you're really an amazing musician, great entertainer, it's a difference. Thank you're a great musician, but a great entertainer. I love your I'd say, Thank you. make me feel good. And I like to see people succeed, and I, I think you, a very big success. Obviously, you're a big, big uh, Thanks, uh, artist. Man. Tell us about your, how you how you got into this. Just this, and then we're gonna get back into your cool. childhood a little bit. Well, so I knew that I wanted to do music from a very young age. Uh, it, it just like spoke to me that like you know this this would be something that um, you know that I just it was like a lot of fun for me, you know. So. It all kind of comes together, so I kind of have to talk about my childhood if I'm going to talk about my. No, childhood. no, okay. Well, let's, let's like, like, like I, I, I was just a regular ass kid. You know, I was eight or nine. Where did you old. grow up? I, I grew up in the Bay Area, Northern California. My my dad um, got popped selling some drugs down south, so he had to he got relocated. He was part of a union, so they relocated him up north, and we were the only part of our family who was up in in Oakland at the time. So we were born out in the Bay Area. But all my family, all my heart belongs in SoCal, in Southern California, in San Diego specifically. So every vacation I'd always do, like every vacation we'd always have, we was always in San Diego, always in Southern California. I, and I felt so out of place living in Northern California because everything that I knew culture-wise was even in Southern California. And one summer while I was staying out there, my uncle Ramon, he was like, yo mijo, check out this CD right, right above the TV. It's got green writing on it. It says Sublime. It's like, check it out. I think you're gonna like that shit. And, and I didn't play any music or nothing. I was only about 10 years old at this time. And I went and I grabbed a CD and I had a Walkman, you know, and I put it in my shit. And I was like, this is fire, man. That became my like favorite CD, and I listened to it over and over and over again the whole summer. And when I started school, this was uh, sixth grade. I started my my sixth grade, and um, you know, I asked my mom. I was like, yo, is it like, I'd like to get a guitar for, for Christmas. And then I got a guitar, and the first stuff I learned was Sublime songs. Those are the, that's the very bit, like, first bit of music I ever learned. So Sublime was the whole reason why I even got started into music to begin with. And then from that point on, I got the bug, man. Like, I taught myself how to record. I was like 13 years old, playing you, around the laptop. You taught yourself how to guitar? I mean, it, I taught myself how to play guitar, and then I, like, my dad played music uh, for a little bit of, of my childhood, so there was like instruments inside of the garage for like, you know, a couple of years, and I would just get lost in there. This was right around the time where I discovered Sublime, and you know, maybe my dad like, you know, knew that I was into music, so he got into a band or something, I don't know, but it was fucking divine intervention, man, because my mind got turned on to music, and I had a place to just go and get lost and fuck around with shit. There was turntables, drums, PA system, bass guitars, guitars, microphones, and like I could just play on everything and just like let my mind wander. And I knew from that point on, I was like, this is all I wanna do. This was it. And I dedicated my life into just being able to spend as much time as possible doing this shit that I fucking love to do because it was so fun. And that mentality guided me every step of the way through shitty friends, through bad relationships, through you know weird family shit, all the way up until I was 18 years old. And I fucking saved up some money and I moved out of my house and I rented a couch in Hollywood for about $600 a month. I slept on a couch of a one, one bedroom apartment off of Hollywood Boulevard. And um, 
and I just started networking out there. We had to get a little yeah, back. Yeah. Okay, now yeah, it's yeah. a great start because do you play all instruments? I mean, like I, can't, I don't want to play harp or nothing. But, no, you know, what I meant like is a guitar, guitar bass, bass piano, drums, piano. Like producing, you know, like I can, you know, I don't need anyone to make an album. You know, I, I can get it all done like with my laptop and just make. Two young guys with these laptops. When I Dude, grew up, crazy, we didn't have that shit. You know, we had no computers. But I got a fucking quarter million dollar studio too, like with gear from fucking 1970s and all kinds of shit. Cause that's like everything that I've collected over the last 10 years, I've just been buying old gear. So like, I love the hardware and I love the recording of it. But when you mix the old with the new methodology, you have endless possibilities, you know? That's the way I see it, man. Well, uh, we're gonna get into a little bit with your, 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 your childhood. Your dad wasn't the greatest dad in the beginning. It was rough, man. It was, it was rough. It was rough. Can you get into it a little bit? Yeah, man. He had a drug addiction. Okay, he, and he had a crippling so, drug addiction. So you really didn't have a dad growing up? Uh, nah, nah, not nah, not in the sense. You know, my my dad worked his ass off and always tried to put the money, you know, on the table. But he he had a, he had a really bad drug addiction. But you're close but, with him now. Oh, of course. You know, life's sh you know life short, man. It's like you don't get a lot. A time to really like analyze your you know mistakes and stuff and and especially with loved ones like people fuck up man you know what I mean and and do I dad, know what my, you mean my, you, Who you know what I'm talking about <laughs> he like, sure do people fuck up and and you know usually it's with good intention you know and sometimes you know people are just bad people right but my dad was always a good man but he was he was slave to fucking methamphetamine man like and you that know, shit will ruin your life and it ruined his. I tell people all the time, you know, I even wear a shirt. I don't believe in bad people. I believe in bad choices. Yeah. Most people make a lot of bad choices. That's one of my saying. That's I all agree. over the, all over now. But you know, getting it. Let's get into the sublime. You listen to Sublime, the regular blind, which had Bradley at uh -huh. that time. Yeah. And Eric is still there with you guys. My oh boy. And so you actually got your dream job. It's crazy. You yeah, think about that. You love Sublime. You listen to him. So maybe I'll be a musician, I'll do my own thing, I'll get my own band and everything. But no, you hook up with Sublime with Rome, because now that's what it's known, Sublime you know, with Rome. crazy, when I met those, like, well, first off, I met Eric at a studio. I was, in, I was 18 years old, and I was um, recording music in Orange County, and at the studio that I was recording music at, um, the bass player to Sublime, he recorded there as well. He was in a band with the, with the owner of the studio. So I, so I kind of like, you know, got to meet him. And, you know, I, man, I was such a fan. Like, the first time I ever met him, he pulled up in a G-Wagon, smoking a <laughs> blunt, blasting Biggie Smalls. And I was like, this guy's... I love this rad. guy. I love this guy, man. And I grew up with him on my wall. So, like, seeing him was very surreal. And he would start to come by the studio. And I had a sound of my own that was definitely inspired by Sublime. So, the studio owner, who was also kind of servicing as, like, my, like, faux manager at the time, he was kind of like mentor, a, mentor, definitely mentor. I learned everything yeah. from the studio, from Louis, Ab absolutely. Like you know, I, I want to make that clear. Um, but he was like, "Yo, Eric, I've been working with this kid, and he's, you know, he's, he's, he sounds like Brad stuff." Like, now we're, did Bradley just song? pass? No, uh, I was Bradley passed in '96. I was eight when he passed away. So, so what were they doing? Was, what was Sublime doing with no Bradley? Uh, at that time at the time Eric was not in the band he was he, oh. he had like a, um, a Stooges with like an awesome cover band or an awesome punk rock band he he had a, a, a cover band of this punk rock band that he was kind of doing just for fun you know Eric's ball and so uh, like you know he, so he, just, he just does shit for fun and and so when I met him you know he, he didn't really like have like a band he was going on tour with and stuff and um but that was like way to come, you know, because when I met him, it was just like, yo, I'm doing like this project that's like kind of, you know, influenced by Sublime. Like, would you be down to like play one song on it with your bass guitar, you know? I'd be honored. And, you know, he was like, yeah, let's, let's do it, you know? And, and that's how I met him. And then, dude, this guy throws the greatest fucking party. Man. Like, even the cops show up and they're just like, dude, thank you guys for raging. Like, so Eric throws the fucking craziest parties, man. Like, he throws these rages every holiday. If it's birthday, Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, whatever. New Year's I gotta Christmas. go to one of them. You have to. <laughs> I mean, they're insane. Like, he builds like dinosaur sculptures outside. And insane. And I'm telling you, the cops show up, and they're always like mad cool with them because he's like, dude from Sublime. You know yeah, yeah, I mean? they get that. So know. he started inviting me to these parties. 
And he, like he always. And you're had, what, 18, 19? I'm uh, 18 at the time. He, tactically illegal. Damn. Correct? Hey. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I, like, I'm, I give up. Yeah, I know. But you know what I'm saying? No, I gotta say, you definitely, know, definitely, obviously. Definitely, definitely. But and he always has, like, you know, all the instruments set up in his living room and everything. So there's always live music. And this one party that he had, in his, uh, it was uh, Halloween. He said, yo, would you be down to play a Sublime song with me tonight? That was the first time he ever asked. At his party? At his party. With all these people all these from people. all over, from musicians. Long Beach. No, from Long Beach, from where the band was started. So I was wow. Like, okay. I was like, sure. What song? Or he, he's like, what what song do you want to play? And, I was and like, you know the music like that because you know that that song, song fucking favorite band. Yeah, you listen to it all the it time. It was the moment. What was it the was song? That moment. What was you the know song? when they say moment means pre preparation? Absolutely. That was that time. What was the song? I said, I know anyone. And no, but what did you play? Wrong way. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great Because the walking bass line on it, he loves to play it. And, and, and we played wrong way, and the party went the fuck off. Now, this was before, like, Facebook and MySpace and shit. So it was just, like, forums, and everyone was like, we just went to a party with the dude from Sublime, and he, this, this Mexican kid was singing for it. What the fuck is going on? And that's how it That's started. actually how you got your break, so That's how it started, yeah. It was from a party. And he invited me, and it, it worked and we and we did that a couple more times at like on um on uh, um St. Patrick's Day and then on his birthday. Now you're not getting happened. paid at all. No, no, we're just no. jamming. What are you doing for money? Well, I figured out that well, at that time, at that specific time right there, nothing. Eric was helping me out. Gotcha. Because you know, yeah. first of all, you know, you, my brain flooded when you talked about Northern California, so because the Sarenos. Yeah, yeah. Norteños. Norteños. Yep, yep. Prison. I used to deal with the shot calls and yeah. everybody else. Uh, I used to sell weed in Northern California, and then I moved down south. Okay. And I couldn't yeah. move anything, so I got fucked. Yeah, with that shit. But we, we fixed that. But no, I, but yeah, yeah there was a, a really weird period where I I was fucking broke, man. I even sold my guitar. Me and my brother were living out of a van that I bought off my grandma for three hundred dollars, and we lived out of there for about three months. We were bathing in hot tubs and swimming pools and apartment complexes. And during that time, again, I sold my guitar. And Eric, he was just helping me out, man. Like, he, you know, he was like, where's your guitar? And I'm like, I, I fucking hock it, you know? And he was like, take that electric. And I used that electric for 10 years, and now it's hung up in my house. But that was my only guitar I ever used. You see the guitar players with 10 guitars on the side stage? No, nah, bro, I got two. I got that guitar that he gave me, and then a backup one, just in case that one ever took a shit. And now I got that one framed up in my house. But he was helping me out, man. He'd give me cash, just got to get some weed and get some food. We were eventually got to live in like a little motel street in Long Beach. And you know, we, we'd do some jamming, but it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't until that party that we played. You see, Southern California, especially like the reggae rock community that Sublime started, it's very small. And people talk, and especially back then when it wasn't like social media, everyone connected through forums. Word of mouth. Word of mouth, bro. It's alive and well back then. So everyone knew really quick locally that Eric was jamming around with me, and we were playing sublime songs at parties. And I asked my manager, because now how, how did you get a manager? Is it that mentor? Okay. Okay. So so after we, good question. So after we started playing these parties, we started hearing hearing from this guy. And this guy was like, yo, what's up? And he knew Eric from like back in the punk rock days, you know? But he had just reunited Rage Against the Machine. They had been broken up for 10 years. And, you know, he- That's my era. He, he, he partnered up with, you know, this company and they were like, we want to do something fucking crazy for Coachella, something nuts. And, you know, they were like, let's put together Rage. And he's like, let's put together Rage. They're like, can you make it happen? So he made it happen. A couple years later, started hearing this thing around and they wanted to do another crazy thing the same company they were like i'm gonna do something crazy we'll give you a bunch of money this is so crazy he's like oh, i hear that you know this fucking sublime dude's been like playing with some mexican kid in long beach what's up with that you know so this is crazy dude turns out that the studio louis the guy who i work with and met the mentor the mentor his boss the guy who owned that studio was this guy so it was very easy I mean, he all just, come together it all came together and he came in and was just like what's up guys and he just listened to music and stuff and and now 
I wasn't a part of this conversation. I don't know anything, but I remember it was October 28th, my brother's birthday, and it was three in the morning, and I got a, uh, a, a text message from the mentor. And he said, hey man, crazy shit. I just talked with Eric and Cheese. Wouldn't it be crazy if you were singing with Sublime one day? And I fucking just reached over. I used to have this little, at the time, I was writing all my dreams down in a notepad. And, and I just reached over on my nightpad and I was like, it's October 28th at 2.30 in the morning. And I just got a call saying that, wouldn't it be crazy? I'd be singing for Sublime someday. Fast forward like two months, I get a call from the manager, the guy who wants to put together the band. And he's like, why don't you come over to my house next Wednesday? Um, I want to talk about a couple things. And, I, and I've already sent him kind of like some solo music I've been working on and stuff, you know? And uh, Stop you one sec. Yeah, yeah. You're a hell of a writer. You write music. You're not just a singer. Well, I haven't made any more money yet. No, no, but we're, I mean, but, but, people but, yeah, yeah. who are going to know, we're going to get into all of that, but it's amazing. And I know, because when I do these, I'm intrigued, so I know my audience is they're thinking, okay, why don't you ask him this or whatever. Do you have any formal training with no, singing? No, 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 no. Anything. No, just You're a class. great singer. Thanks, bro. Man, I love it, man. I, well, I, 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 I do. I, I can name you three records where I stole it off from, man. Stevie Wonder. <laughs> man, uh, songs, not a bad one to steal from. Songs in the Key of Life, Miseducation of, of Lauryn Hill, and Edit James at last. That, that, that's all my moves. You listen to those three albums, and they'd be like, "Oh, that's where he got that layup. Oh, that's where he got that done." Because I just worship. But those you know, records. but you know, everybody thinks they can sing. Believe it. I mean, you know, people. Did you know you had that gift, or was it just eighteen years old? You're at Eric Wilson's house partying, and he asked you to play. So yeah, you know, did you ever? I mean, did, what did you? I mean, how does that come about? There was a moment. Okay. Because when I heard Sublime, I just wanted to be a guitar player. I didn't want to be a singer. And I wanted to be a guitar player, and that lasted for like five years. I didn't, I didn't sing until I was uh, 15. And oh, from 10 years old, you really knew what you yeah, wanted to do. I, I, I played mean, guitar for five years. I was badass, like for a kid. You and you learned I mean? yourself. Yeah, yeah, all yeah, yourself. Self, self, self there was no YouTube either. No, 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 no. There was no YouTube. Either. I know, I know. So it was, it was, it was just, uh, you know, self, like tablature, listening to music a lot. And Got a good ear. Practicing, eating. practicing. Um, and, but, but I always sing songs in my room, you know, to myself, right? I'm not saying anything else. Mm -hmm. And then I went to a party in, in, in high school. I was like, I was uh, 15 years old and I was at this kickback and this girl had an acoustic guitar. There was like three girls and a couple dudes, and then like she like had her dad's guitar out, and she's like, "Does anyone know how to play?" I'm like, "Fuck, give me that thing!" And I started playing a bunch of songs and stuff, and she's like, "Dude, can you sing though? Like, come on, sing us a song!" And I'm like, "Oh, I don't. I'm just a guitar player." Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Like, in the I, background, I don't sing, you're I don't cool, sing, you know, you know doing this stuff. Like, you don't sing? And I'm like, "Nah, it's not really my thing." And she's like, "Do you know any Sublime songs?" And I was like, "I know them all." And I fucking played Bad Fish and I sang for the very first time in my life in public to a party of like six, seven people. And knocked it out of the park. Dude, they were all like, yo, you're a fucking singer. You gotta start singing. Like, what do you mean you don't sing? I'm like, I don't really sing. Like, And this is 15 years old. I was 15 years old. From that party on, I said, maybe I'm a singer. So I started writing my own songs. I started practicing singing and I started doing that. And then three years later, that's when I met Savant. But from like 15 is when I first sang and I really got into like singing and then I stopped caring about the guitar and all I wanted to do was be a songwriter. And a a songwriter, not yeah. just, I mean, not just a singer. Let, let's a get into your songwriting. You know? you've, you've wrote songs for some pretty good people. Yeah. Tell us who they are. I, I've done stuff for like Selena Gomez, Enrique Iglesias, Jason Derulo, fucking Run DMC, Blues Traveler, Jewel. Jay Z, I mean, a bunch of different people. You, so you wrote and that they used. Yep, wrote and is that and when you start getting stuff. paid? No, well, well, I mean, obviously, yeah, yeah. But but before any of that, see what happened was so okay. So right, let me back up to when I got that call from um, the the guy who put together Rage, right? My manager. He invited me over on that Wednesday, and when I pulled up to the house, him and Eric, the bass player to Sublime, were sitting in the living room. And um, he's like, dude, what's up? You want some water? Sit down, you know, let's talk, you know, bonus. And are you, you're 18? Uh, yeah, 18 okay. at the time. Or oh, 19 at the time, okay. three years since that. So 
um, 19 at the time, and he said, cool, dope. He's like, so obviously I've been listening to the music you've been sending me and everything, and it's like, you're super talented, like your songs are really good. He's like, I put together bands, and I make superstars. He's like, that's what I do. So, Did you hear of him? You, was he big in the industry? He just did Rage Against the Machine. Right, okay. Warren, Lincoln Park. Okay. So I was very familiar with... Who, who he who, is what and he the does. power at. You know, uh -huh. you gotta have people behind you. Oh, dude. I I, I mean, I pulled up to a fucking multi-million dollar house in New York yeah, Beach. Whoa. I knew that I wasn't on some fucking... Some guy I would have robbed it, dude. I would have robbed the house. Would have been a fucking... <laughs> Rightfully so, though, man. No, 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 no. You, you, you know, just the time. It, it's really great. Now, so tell me, so you, you write stuff, but they ask you to become... So, so right, right there at that moment, he asked me, he was like, okay, look, here's how I see it. There's two ways. Eric's right there. He's like, I can put you in a band, and we can get you torn. I'll get you an agent, and we'll start just hitting the circuits around the country. I'll get you a record deal. We'll start putting out singles. We'll start filling out rooms. In about seven to ten years, you'll start to be able to live a life that you think you're gonna live through music. Or, how would you like to sing for Sublime? Now, Bradley, the tragedy happened with Bradley a long time before that. 15 years. Was Sublime still playing? No. So they were off the road. For they just years. don't, they just, records were always playing on the radios and stuff, the, but they are not actually touring or the, playing. The bass player and the drummer of Sublime hadn't talked to each other for seven years. Not even a word. Eric and the, and the drummer. But not even a word. So this was, this so, wasn't on anyone's radar. Right, okay, yeah. See, no that's one's the radar. big thing, you no know? One's radar. How does Rome become not even with my Sublime? Radar. Right. So it was just. I mean, you're thinking was, Sublime's was over, pretty Ooh, much. And they're my favorite band. And they're over, though, because they haven't you know toured, the they thing, haven't made new records you know or nothing. The first thing I said was, because I was just so flabbergasted, I said, but Brad's dead. That's like the first thing, like my natural reaction, I was like, but Brad's dead, how can I sing for Sublime if Brad's dead? And then Eric answers, he goes, no shit, dumbass. I'm like, oh, <laughs> That's yeah. Eric too. Oh, yeah. That's just the way Eric yeah, does that's it. That's right, that's right, that's right, okay. You're right, let me gather composure here. And and, and I was just like, can I step outside for a minute? I just gotta but did they outside. say, we, we want you to be the lead singer for? It was, it was simple as that. He, he said, you can do your own path or you can join and sing for Sublime. And they named it at that point Sublime with Rome? No, no, no. It was, it okay. was Sublime because, was Sublime. you know, the guys wanted to use their band name. You know what I mean? Sure. And, so why and, not? You got a built-in well, avenue. Well, at the time, I mean, it was just Eric because, you know, Eric was like, you know, he was built excited again. So he was like down to go down that road, you know? And, um, and, I, and I walked back in and I was like, let's go. I'm down. Let's fucking do it, you know? And then... Now, did they offer you a contract at all? Fuck no! It was a year of just broke. No calls. No nothing. No, While you're shit. playing? No, I'm not playing. I'm just fucking just living my life. I'm just you like, You waited broke. after. Broke. No, what I'm saying is when they talked to you about that. Yeah. It was another right. year. We'll call you. Sounds good. I, listen, I, understanding it's things. It's the music industry, bro. It's archaically slow. And, but you, it's like the movie, TV industry, the same way. So I understand. All oh, artists, interesting. But, so you're sitting there not making money. You, you must be saying, oh, fuck, man, I... When are they gonna call? I don't want to sound like I, I gotta call them and this. What? Are you still talking to Eric like all the time? He's a like, buddy. I'm still heading over there every other fucking day. Right, and he's not saying anything. He's just saying, "Hey, kid, you got this oh, is the yeah, way it he, is." Uh, dude, he, he knows less than I do. <laughs> he's a fucking rock star, bro. He's not looking emails. And, yeah. No, 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 no. If anybody was to know, I mean, I, I would be telling him he's completely jacked out. Yeah. But the only difference is he's a millionaire and I'm fucking broke as a joke. Right. So, so for me, so which leads and you're me, hustling to make a few dollars. Again, so to circle back to what you were saying, how'd you make money? This is why I said after that meeting with the forums and everything, word travels fast. So after that meeting, of course, after a couple months, I'm just kind of like, what's the fuck's going on, right? You know. I have all my family. Of course, I told them all about the meeting, all my friends, you know? They're like, what's up, dude? Like, you know what I mean? Sublime, like, do you have any money? Like, hey, you paid back like, that $700 for the fucking rally you borrowed? You're like, all this shit, right? And You're I'm still like, yeah. driving around in I'm a like, piece of shit car. Oh, dude, I'm still living in my van. I'm just like, yeah, you know, I, I think it's gonna happen. I don't know, I'm gonna find out, you know? And um, and and and, and I called my, uh, my soon-to-be manager at the time. I, I called Cheese, his name is Cheese. And I called him up and I was just like, Hey man, like, 
you know, I'm gonna be a singer of Sublime and stuff. That's what you were saying. Like, I'm fucking hurting, man. Do you think I can, like, maybe get, like, a check, some money? Or, like, is there any money that I can get? You know, like, I, I'm, like, living in. An advance or something. An advance, right? That's what I was saying. That's what my uncles were saying. I'm like, you get an advance. That's what happens in music. You get an advance. Against your world. Stuff. And your uncles they don't, don't know like, shit, do they? They don't know shit from <laughs> Apple Butter. Yeah, this I'm is like, what they do. I'm like, yeah, dude. Um, so, uh, you think I can get, like, an advance, you know, for some of that money I'm making you guys? And. He's like, check it out. You haven't made a penny so far. And so far, we have spent this much money in just legal fees, just getting things prepared to get this whole business rolling for you. He's like, so let me give you some word of advice. He's like, figure out a way for you to make some money because there's no hands out. There's no handouts in this world. It's, it's from my man. Great, great advice. From that turning point on, my whole entire life changed. From that fucking moment on, my whole entire life changed. And he's been at the at the precipice of the entire, along the way. But from that point on, that was the very first, because my father, God bless his heart, he, he never bestowed this type of stuff. So he really kids. wasn't around. He I mean, he had to he fight he his own he addictions. Had his and own everything. war to, to fight, okay? But this is a rich man who's been around and seen some shit. Who sees a young struggling Mexican kid who comes up in an opportunity? Who's about to come into some dough, and I should probably get him fucking ready for what's about to come. And he did, and he got me fucking ready for it. He was like, "Figure out a way to make more money right now, and it'll save your life." And that's exactly what I did. I hung up the phone with him, and I started calling around all the bars and gas pumps in the area, and I said, "Have you guys heard about uh, Sublime getting together with a kid? I'm I'm a local talent buyer for, for shows, and they were like." Yeah, we heard about that. It was like, yeah, I, I represent him. We're, we're, we're going to be doing some stuff. I'll, I'll call you back. And then I, you know, I fucking wait and I call another one and I call another one. And then I fucking call him back the next day and be like, hey, I got Rome. He's, he's a good kid. And I was like, how would you like him to come and sing a couple songs and while your restaurant has some dinner and stuff? You know what I mean? They're like, we love it. So I used to get paid $400. To go play three hours of music, sublime songs, reggae songs, Stevie Wonder songs, Michael Jackson songs, everything on guitar. And they'd give me dinner as well. $400 plus a steak dinner at three different spots in Orange County. And at the time, I was making about $1,000 a week. And I was. You were a millionaire. I was a millionaire, bro. <laughs> I was a fucking millionaire. I was like, this is it. This is it. And to this day, those are some of the happiest times of my fucking life. Because I'm living around in my van with my brother and we're making cash and we got a bag of weed and we're fucking eating good and and, 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 and You're not a, you, you got an apartment, I'm not, you're I'm not paying. Verizon anymore. I'm not fucking you know what I'm like, fuck this bullshit. You know what I mean? It's like You you know what happened? You made a great you got a really good lesson young and, and here's what the lesson was. You didn't have anything. Like no. when I grew up and didn't have any, I grew, you know, we grew up with five kids and we had a two bedroom bungalow in the Bronx and the gangsters and we hustled. We, we, we had to go for it, but we understood that it's you who got to hustle. You can't yeah. go to the mobs and say, hey, listen, hey, I need a, you know, a thousand dollars. Yeah, you're going to charge your fucking interest that you ain't paying and then you're in trouble. I mean, That's obviously true. in that game. No, it's true. But now you, so let, I got to get back to this because. Insurance now, is the same thing. Insurance companies are fucking mob too, bro. Bigger mob than I ever was. That's what they saying. steal more money yeah, than I ever stole. Biggest thieves in them all. You're gonna like this quick story. Uh, when I get arrested, you know, the helicopters around the fucking house, fucking agents through the back patio around the fuck, every fucking Jeez. thing, you know. I mean, crazy shit. Go the whole place. I won't rat. That's my bad. I would never rat, and I still did. And I, I was offered keep all my millions, get three years. If I told on the bosses of my bosses, which my ultimate boss worked for Castellano and then Gotti, but obviously. So. Definitely didn't want to do that. No, it wasn't even that. I was the wild guy. I was the guy you didn't want to fuck with back then. I was really a bad guy. And I, my, even my audience knows that people change. And that's the best thing I tell Absolutely. people. But what happened was, uh, so here we are. My bosses, you know, I have to. What am I gonna do? How the fuck am I gonna do this? The feds are over my house. They're talking to me every day. Fuck you. I fucking I got no money. You know, you don't have money, but you're a gangster. You fucking spend it as quick as you made. Mm -hmm. I made millions. I lost three million in casinos. I lost a quarter million in two weeks. I didn't give a fuck because I knew I was robbing it. I didn't give a shit. <laughs> you knew it was coming back. <laughs> I had a limousine, multiple homes, horses, boats. I just didn't give a fuck because you're making so much money. So 
Anyway, what, what happens is the FBI says to me, they go, you know, Larry, we can't find any of the jewelry people that you robbed to talk bad about you. The lawyer goes, you know who really wanted you? The insurance companies. Because they were getting hit. They're fucking getting hit. They got this guy, you know, I robbed, you know, 15, 18 million. Oh, yeah. And, and they're getting hit for this money. So they hated me. But they had a cr- I even the, number one listen, for them, dude. even the FBI says, you know, Larry, we hate to say it, they're bigger criminals than you. This is the FBI! That's the damn truth, man. But that I want to get back to you. This is that stuff. So here you are, 18, you're waiting. You get a phone call a year later. So here we are. I get a phone call and they're like, yo, we got a tour booked. Show up. Um, or no, we had one one show booked. And we went and go play the show. With Eric? With Eric and Bud. Why well, the drummer was Bud, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> first, first we had to go fly out to Reno and you know, I had to go meet Bud and kind of, you know, meet him and practice with him. Uh, stuff, rehearse. You know? yeah. Rehearse, you know? But now, you don't even understand gonna... rehearsing, do you? You don't know this industry I mean, like I, that. I, I, I mean, you know, you, well, now I you're mean, learning, these, you're practicing. But these guys aren't Lincoln Park. I mean, these, these guys were like punk rockers. And, you know, the singer died. And then they didn't even get to play even a quarter of the size of venues you've seen them play. Unfortunately, like, they were just doing clubs. And, and, and making Bradley music passed. and records and that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, Bradley passed, and then they sold 20 million records. Is that so, how it so happened? So they never really even got to live this, riding around in tour buses and stuff like that. Like, you know, like we do. I have seen in Orlando it's and all this. But it's, it's a, it's this is a whole new for even them. So for them, it, it's still like, for lack of better words, I, 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 I don't want to say like uh, amateur, but it's not, it's not amateur, but it, it's just, um, it's just not on the professional not- tip yet because like. You know, the guys aren't playing in fucking arenas and shit every night, you know what I mean? Like, this this, this, is, this is a business, man. There's different tiers to this shit. And, you know... So now, you, okay, you, 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 here you are. Go rehearse with Rome. Was there a contract? How much did you make? Your first one. Well, dude, the, the first show, I walked out of there with $3,000. After all the expenses from everything. And then, the one of my homies lent me $6,000. So I didn't... After the first Sublime show, I was fucking broke. Oh, you actually, you still had no money. Nothing, bro. Because of all the legal fees and, and, oh, and then all like, dude, I was like, there were people who were like kind of banking on me doing something and they would, you know, kind of help me out here or there. But my thing is I pay everyone back, man. I kept a long fucking track record. Anybody who ever helped me out, even if it was a favor, I monetized that and I helped you out, you know? Because smart, very you smart. fucking help me. But here you are now. You're, you're 19 years old. So you go meet Bud. You, Eric, and Bud are rehearsing in a garage, this little studio, whatever the yep. fuck you go. You're rehearsing in. You go play this venue. Was it a big venue? Huge venue. Twenty thousand people. Twenty thousand people. First show. First show overnight. And you only make three grand. Oh, yeah, at the end of it, yeah. And I mean, the band got paid. You know, probably close to like. I don't really know actually. Oh, you don't even have to say. But, you, but, gotta, you, you got to pay, but after everything, man, and everything. I know it works, yeah. And then, not not to mention, like, my my manager at the time, did this was at after our first tour after that, because we, we, we played the show. And, and it was a hit. A mega hit. Mega hit. And Where was it? it? This was in Southern California at Smokeout. Okay, so now you're already known locally. Uh-huh. Ah, you played some of these clubs. Oh, it yeah, is. I mean, this was oh wow, he's now the Rolling, new singer. Rolling Stone picked it up. To it, everyone, is know? it called at that time it's sublime. Sublime, it's sublime? Not with Rome. Nope, just okay. Sublime. And then that's when the fucking uh, lawsuit happened from uh, the legacy, the family that owns the names, Brad's wife, because he trademarked the name behind the guy's back. He, The family owns the name. So what they did was they... they Issue to cease and desist. Hey, you can't use that name unless you're, you're paying us. You know what I mean? It's a licensing. It's just like Coca Cola or Supreme or something. Same shit, man. Business is business. At the time, I'm, I'm fucking 19 years old, man. I just play with some. I'm out on boats. I'm hanging out with girls, smoking weed. So. And, and now you're, yeah, are, are you single? Still broke. Single, but single. Single. Fucking single, broads, having still a good broke, time. But the good thing about that was like, I was never around for any of the bullshit, the lawsuits, any of that stuff, the court hearings, or any of that stuff to, to, to figure out what the name was going to be. I wasn't even involved in it. They didn't put me on no emails. Why would they? I'm a, yeah, you're a 19 I'm a year old kid. I'm a 19 year old add on. Right, right. He just happens to be a good singer. Emails. But they saw. 
That's all Again. it was. And they, I mean, eventually down the road, because what happened after that show? So they, they get the rights to use Sublime. And after that show, there, there was about a year of nothing. Again, another year of nothing going on. And during that time, I wrote a song for the Dirty Hands. And the song was called Lay Me Down. And that song went number one, and it went gold. And I got publishing companies hitting me up left and right, saying, we will give you hella money, just keep writing songs like this. And you're so, 19 years old, so or maybe just so, turned 20. So even before Sublime put any significant money in my account, this song that I did for this band put half a million dollars in my bank account like that. And from that point on, I learned the song is the most important part. Like, it's all about the music. And I just dedicated my life to the song. And that's where I got into the producing. Enrique, Selena, and all these other people. To this day, still, I own a label and I work with developed artists because I... I want to I, think quickly about that. I love the art of the music. And I, I, I just storytelling. Love I love the storytelling part, and and it, it's the songs that have always been the thing that have always changed my life. So even to this day, like now, fast forward ten years, we're touring around. Fucking, we've been every country damn near. You know, sometimes we're we're blessed to play arenas, sometimes stadiums, sometimes just bars, because we'll throw free shows. But well, let me are. ask you a question, because there's a lot of people saying, here's a twenty year old kid now, maybe twenty, I guess. You make a half a million dollars. Holy fuck. Obviously tax and all that, but you're still half a million dollars. You don't blow it. No, my manager said, like, you don't get to touch this money. You get to live off $1,000 a month. $1,000 a month? $2,000 a month. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> $2,000 a month. Your manager, who is your... My father-in-law. Father-in-law yeah, now, I, I knew that. He met him, married his daughter. I met him on the, on the West yeah. Palm Beach concert we he went to. He taught me everything I know, man. And that, that advice... And using that brains is obviously I've talked to you already, and I know you are, and that you're a businessman as well as a great artist. But we literally have the same jobs. You tell stories through music. I tell story to my audience from experience and back, you know, backdrop. That's Absolutely. literally what we do. Absolutely, because we're both artists or entertainers. Absolutely, and that's what we do. Absolutely, and I love what I do, and that's why it grows so quick, and everybody wants to keep hearing the stories. And you do the same exact thing. But now, you're 20 years old, you make some money, they put you on tour, the whole band, Sublime, just Sublime. Yeah. Where does Sublime with Rome come in? Well, it was right at that point where it was just like, okay, you know, it's a, like I was saying earlier, just a straight licensing deal, right, for the name. And then it's like, okay, let's now book a tour. All the, all the back end stuff is now taken care of. Now, now did you have work. any blowback from Eric or Bud about being your name thrown up in the front? No, 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 no. Um, mainly from like maybe a couple really diehard fans who didn't want to see the band even reform. But for the for the most part, no, man. There was no. I mean, it, you know, we kind of borrowed it from Queen with Paul Rogers. The, the reason I ask you, because I have heard that. Oh, that's Sublime with Rome. It's not Sublime. Yeah. And here they're gonna hear this. I mean, no. it, it, there there is absolute validation to that because it is they're two different entities. Existing at two different points of time, but at but the beginning is two of the not. members and you, so it's an add-on member. So it is sublime, no matter how you look at it. You well, were I sublime. Mean, yes, yeah, but but I mean, those those kind of things come down to, at least in my opinion, those kind of things come down to technicalities, and a lot of them side with reasoning of the law and the copyright, because that's that's what we fight and pay for. It, even you. You'd be pissed if someone came out with fucking real Larry Law and us. We have it all over. Wait, wait. We got people in Russia. I might got people trying still, to put up shit. I have my shit copyrighted too, and there's still people dropping songs on my spot. If you go <laughs> on YouTube right now, you'll see people. People just use my name to get fifty thousand, a hundred thousand, and, and I like. I just don't even bother anymore. I don't give a fuck. You can't. You'd be up all night trying to fight this shit. Yeah, yeah. So instead, you focus your energy on the things that pays the bills. Absolutely. And entertains people. Because that's the main thing. Which is means music, songs. Now, my head see, music. like, what again, people didn't understand you. I, I got to know you and my talk, my son. You're really a hell of a, not only a businessman, writing music is probably more profitable than most anything. And the rights to those music and the songs. I mean, I remember, you know, I read a whole book on Elton John and the guy, you know, who wrote for him and all, uh, uh, Bernie uh, Taupin. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That guy's worth a zillion dollars. 
because he has the you know the rights when he wrote the songs and yeah. you know, I, you know of course I'm John so John but well it's the kind of thing where it's like you know it, it, it's a long game because the actual finances of like music are, are really terrible they don't really pay very good so, like I always tell people like if your goal is to get rich like stay far away from music stay far absolutely away from be music. an investment banker be a stay be a, a hedge fund far away from music if if that's what your main intention is is to like stack it up and build an empire get the fuck out of music because one in a million will do that well, well even less than that but I, I mean like the reality is is like if you're going for like trying to monetize music and catalog is, is your is your main game and catalog takes forever because it's called catalog, you know, it's fucking the hunt. You build it and it takes you so long to make it's a song, it's gotta be perfect, song. you know, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's almost going the same as YouTube. I have a catalog, you know. Exactly, all your videos, they uh, like. I have 300 now, I don't know what it is. And, yeah, no, of course. Exactly, okay, but you also have that dedication, that work ethic. That's, whether it's your dad or your mom, somebody did something right. You know, I get a lot of young people coming. I said, listen, it comes a time in your life you gotta say, I don't want to hear the excuse anymore. Yeah, I know your dad's in jail, your mom's a fucking crackhead, or whatever the fuck it is. Comes a time in your life where you know what right and wrong is. You got to make the right choices and be a success for yourself. You got to change it around. You got to break a cycle. Yeah. I'm here to help people. I always say that. Yeah. And, and everybody. Now you didn't come like me. We we didn't come from anything. We worked hard because whatever we did, I was a successful criminal. Successful, and now I'm well, successful my dad YouTuber. Was running, my, my dad was running out of the house at like 12, 13, so I had to. But believe it or not, you and, learned and, from that. But I have a younger brother and a younger sister, so I had to step up quick. I had to get them ready for school. I walked my sister to school. I had to, you know, look out my brother. Like, Chose oh, your heart. No, Mom would work two jobs. I had to go back. Do that whole thing, you know what I mean? And then. But that like, shows your heart. But and that shows your guitar. heart. But that's. I learned everything from my mother and father. Oh, everybody does good and bad. I tell good people and bad. good and bad. Even my, Whether it's what not mistakes, to do, what not to do. And this is actually what I tell my dad because sometimes we'll we'll be sitting over a table just like this. It'll be fucking midnight, and we'll just be eating food and just talking and shit. He, he's sober now, and you know, like we'll get into something, and he'll just get all like emotional and start tearing up. You know, I just feel so bad. I'm like, look at me. Look at my life. Look at these grandchildren. Look at where they get to live. Look at your life. You did exactly what was supposed to happen. And here we are. You and now I get to do this to my boys. I had two boys at home. And now I get to do this, the same thing to my boys. I get to be a little bit better of a dad than you were. But I get to take everything that you showed me what not to do and what to do every once in a while and apply the same exact knowledge and strength to them. Because men need that guidance right now. And we need people to fuck up just as much as we need people to do good. You know, Rome, my son says the same thing to me, you know, because when I, I was away for his life, when my, my son was seven till he was 18, I'm in I'm in the penitentiary. Yeah. So obviously it always hurts me and I, and he knows that. And, you know, and my daughter was 15 months old. I got out and she was 13. So I missed such fucking years of my kids' lives. And, and, and you know what? I'm very close. You know that how close yeah, I am absolutely, on my kids. Absolutely. My son works for me. My, my daughter, I want to get her work for me. But, you know, she'll learn. Yeah, <laughs> she'll learn. But... Whether, I think that just made you mature, quicker, younger, to handle what was thrown in front of you. How many 20 year olds can handle getting a half a million dollar check and saying, you know, fuck you, I live like shit all day, I wanna buy this, I wanna buy that, I wanna do this, and before you know it, you're fucking struggling with, oh, where's our next concert, what are we doing next? All the bullshit that we don't need. We need, and you should live good. But, you know, one thing that I also kind of learned was like, the more money you spend, the less time you have to spend with the art. Because you just need them, like, like in my life, and I, I fucking hate talking about money, but, um, like, I like, like, money I, makes the I, world I, go round. I've, I've, I've gotten more success by saying no than saying yes. You, you know what they always say, less is more. And I, and I believe that because, because I try, like, I do my best to try not to live so extravagant, it allows me to only have to say yes to things that I want to do. Because I don't have to do things for money. Like, I don't have to do that show or do that feature. Or and you know how many and artists so, do? So, the, well, a lot of people do. I mean, how, doctors do the same thing. Absolutely. Everybody lives right about at their means. And, and in my so sense, like, my thing was, like, even half of what I make in a year is 
monumentally better than how I grew up. So it was very easy for me to set a barrier and then to just to keep the art as the main focus. The art is the main focus, always. Not the money, not not the next you know purchase. It's always like, because art, the muse has what's always rewarded my life. So I will do everything in my power to always respect the art and make the art come first. And the moment that you're like, I gotta make a fucking hit because I gotta pay for this shit. Like, dude, you're never gonna, you're never gonna make you're the never hit. gonna make that shit. Now, 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 okay, we just got through because I'm gonna run out of time. A yeah, little yeah, bit. I got you. We just got through. How you made it, man? It's amazing. Yeah. What's next? Now you like you tore all over. You've been on yeah. Sublime. With Rome came when? Three years after. Uh, when 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 they changed the name to Sublime with oh, Rome? That, that was one year. One year, Nine okay. Months, yeah. It must be a big fucking, you know, you get a fucking, you know, erection in there and say, fuck, I'm sublime with Rome. Oh, dude, what a, no, and that, here's the biggest part. That was your dream band when you were a kid. It's like, I have a friend, I don't know if you know who he is, Michael K. He's the announcer for the New York Yankees. When we were growing up, he wanted to be an announcer for the Yankees. He is the biggest star. Uh, okay, mega. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah, well, that's okay. Yeah. It just might come true. And that's okay. It's the truth, man. But listen, so now you're in Sublime at Rome. You're touring the country. You're touring things. You're meeting people. You're learning. You're absorbing information. I noticed that about you. Whether it's from me, fun. experience, absolute. Listen, I was just telling you, your, your bodyguard, I also still am learning. And I'm not a kid anymore. Dude, that's, and that's, that's, that. the, that's the key. Whether it's from young people I'm a, I'm very bullish which is positive of course on young people because I see the, the the innovativeness the young people like yourself who are really gonna leave this country and pay you know for things down the line and my son the hustler hustler I love I love yeah. kids who are hustlers and, and smart and quick and whatever they do but you gotta hustle with compassion though. oh yeah you have Dude, to have man. a big heart man well, that, that's what that's what really does things you have to hustle with intent Hustle with intent. Okay, where are you going? Man. What's your next step? Where's where I'm going? What's coming next is honestly like what we're we're trying to do is like take this to even the next level where th there are countries that we even haven't really hit big touring yet, like Asia, like even in Europe, like we've done like Austria and like France and shit like that, but like like to take the sound to you know more of the world, man, like that's that's the goal, you know, like that that's what I want to see. Us accomplish. Let's call it oh, mega stardom. Ten years, man. I mean, be yeah, man. be a band that. I mean, obviously, you have outside some, of your own domestic territory. You, you know, here's what I always look at. You know, obviously, you're successful. Your band has a loyal following. I'm hearing ten thousand people singing your songs in a festival, just having fun. Every, I mean, it was like, and and you, you're a great entertainer. It's fucking wild out there. It, they're, yeah. they're they're the best fucking audience. <laughs> I did notice like, you're like me. I'm very focused. Believe it or not, before even this sitting down, I'm setting things up. I do some questions, to understand things. I throw the fuckers out. I it's, but when it's game time. It's game it's time. It's game time. I you know I can party with the this best is, of them. You know is, that. This is this is and you'll you'll understand what I'm saying, especially today because you knew we were having this this interview. You know I left your concert to come get get ready. This is everyone's vacation, except for you and I. Absolutely. It's work today. This is actually the, these last two days is actually how I put food on my family's table. So, and this is everyone's big vacation. So do I. I know, I know, I know. That's why I'm like, you would understand that. For everyone else, this is them like, dude, can I get another beer? Like, dude, let's talk, let's catch up. And I'm down. But just know, in the back of my mind, I have work tonight. You know, I had to go and destroy this fucking show and shut it down because the dirty heads about to come up and blow the roof off this bitch. So I got to do the same fucking thing. And, and, and you and, did, and, and you did. And, but but that's and, and that's why it's not you know like we're not out here all day. Well, you know you, you know what I just saw you today and, and it was really impressed me. I was backstage and I saw you getting ready and you said hello and all that, but you were focusing, you were gearing up, you had your things, and I I saw that so I didn't bother you. I just, I, I love that. Yeah, because you know I me, mean? I would have been like, what's up, what's up, what's up? Yeah, of course. But it's just, this is game time. This is game time. I'm in the end zone. And I'm then you fucking... perform. And then you perform. And that makes you where you are today. Hey, everybody, always check out all the links below. Rome is amazing. I mean, just go see his concert. I guarantee you'll have a blast. Uh, maybe you'll see me at one of the concerts because I'm going to go to more because I, I, my son says I'm on He's vacation. He's a man. He's a <laughs> man. My, my, my son says to me, he goes, you know, Dad, you're on vacation for 300 years, 300 days a year. I said, fuck. 
<laughs> Here's what he says to me. He goes, you've been on vacation for... I said, I'm not. You obviously know that. And again, oh, of this is work but to me. You do what you love. This is work to me. It's a very gray line when you do what you love. Oh, yeah. It's Absolutely. Awesome. I mean... You know, I don't consider it work. You see the meme? Work is a fall like, of work. I, I, I wanted to uh, be a part-time employer or something where it's like, now we work 24-7. Very true. Right. Very true. Rome, again, thank you very much. Love you, Guys, man. make thank good you. choices. Make one good choice every single day, and you'll feel a lot better of yourself. Always help somebody. Have a great day, everybody. Absolutely. Take care.